Hey Michael, with X-Force PC, we want to talk about our new Ryzen system that we put together. And as you may have known, we've been doing some testing on third gen Ryzen. Don't confuse that with Ryzen 3. Um, that's kind of like the i3 version of Ryzen. Um, but the Ryzen third generation has done quite nicely. It's been very well received. Now in the past, Ryzen first and second gen, we said a big no to that when it comes to X-Plane, it performed terribly, terribly. We're talking half the performance that you should expect or would have expected uh, is, the, is the type of performance we were seeing on first and second gen Ryzen. But third gen Ryzen pulls within percentage points of Intel. And so we thought it appropriate to put together a system. And so we've done that. Now, um, you may or may not know that AMD's colors are red and Intel's colors are blue. So sometimes people refer to them as the red team and the blue team. So that's why we picked this case with a nice little um, decorative red stripe or swoosh on it to represent the red team being AMD. Now AMD um, in the lineup, it starts from down, well, at least the ones we're gonna deal with, the 3600 all the way up to the 3900X. And what we found is the performance in X-Plane is about the same all the way up the product stack, all the way up to the 3900X. And the reason for that is, as you go up this AMD Ryzen stack, at least starting with about the 3600 on up, you really don't increase clock speed all that much. And that's what X-Plane craves is clock speed. What they do is they add more cores. So the 3600X has six cores. Then you go up to the 3700X and the 3800X and they have eight cores. And then you go up to the 3900X and it has 12 cores. But again, frequency really doesn't change that much. It goes from, um, you know, about uh, maximum boost frequency of about 4.4 up to 4.6. So that's a pretty small change, not really something you're really going to notice a whole lot in X-Plane. So um, it is possible, though, that you might have workloads that could benefit from those additional cores. And so if you do, if you're doing AutoCAD or desktop publishing or video editing, things like that, that can use more cores, then certainly by all means consider the 8-core or even the 12-core version of the Ryzen chip. Also, we don't know what X-Plane is going to do down the road. Maybe future versions of X-Plane can use more than four cores. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, I, typically, gaming uh, doesn't benefit from lots and lots of cores, but that is slowly changing. So we'll see. Maybe future versions of X-Plane can leverage eight cores, 12 cores, even six cores um, would be nice. So uh, bear that in mind when you're looking at the uh, various processors in the lineup. So um, next we're going to talk a little bit more about the platform that we've built this on. So the platform we're using is the X570 chipset. Um, X570, that chipset came out with or alongside third gen Ryzen. Technically, Ryzen is supported on older boards, like the X470 and the B450 chipsets, but those have been out for several years. Um, compatibility is great, performance is good, but the VRMs, the Voltage regulator, Regulating Modules, or VRMs, are maybe not up to the job, of, especially if you're going to pick the 12-core version of the uh, Ryzen processor. So that's why we just said, you know, we're just going to go with X570. We know it's going to be up to the task. Now there's a few other things X570 brings to the table. It brings USB 3.2, so you'll have some USB 3.2 ports. Um, basically it's just a little more updated version of USB 3 that's a little bit faster. Of course the device you're using has to support USB 3.2 to take advantage of that additional bandwidth but those ports are backwards compatible. The other thing that uh, X570 brings to the table is PCI Express 4.0. Everything built in the last few years has been PCI Express 3.0 and that's the bus you know, on the motherboard and it has a certain amount of bandwidth and PCI Express 4.0 brings more bandwidth. Now, um, that isn't as big of a deal as it might sound. What does it mean in practical terms? Well, there's more bandwidth available to the graphics card, but 
the graphics cards were not currently saturating the PCI Express 3.0 bus. So they really won't see much of a, ben a benefit at this time by having PCI Express 4.0. The other thing um, is it does open up the possibility for higher performance SSDs that um, previously the fastest SSD you could get was about 3,000 megabytes per second and PCI Express 4.0 raises that number. What it goes to I don't know off the top of my head. but. We don't really recommend those types of SSDs for home users. They're very expensive and you won't really notice much of a difference at all. You'd have to have, take a stopwatch out and time things and go, oh yeah, yeah, I see that was, you know, 5% faster, you know, loading X-Plane or whatever it is you're doing. From a dollar's perspective, it really doesn't make sense for the home user to spend that much on an SSD. So. The bottom line is, for right now, PCI Express 4.0 doesn't mean a whole lot for the common home user, even the power home user, but could bring benefits somewhere down the line. So that's the X570 platform. Let's talk a little bit more about the case. Okay, so I shut the system down, and um, one thing we want to look at is behind this front panel, you just kind of yank on it and uh, it comes off. It is attached by one little wire here that does the light in the front there. So um, anyway, if you want to, it has a filter in the front. If you want to get to that, you just pull the front off and then this is held on with a magnet. It's a plastic mesh, can be washed or just brushed off. You see we have one fan here in the front. Now if, you're, if you order, depending on how you order your system, if you get like the 12 core, processor we might throw an extra fan in the front or a fan in the top or or whatever this actually could support a, a large water cooler here in the front a 280 millimeter water cooler so that is possible even though all of the AMD processors come with their own coolers I will say about those coolers they're just good enough so the 3600X comes with a smaller cooler than let's say the uh, the 3900X and the 3600 comes with a smaller cooler than the 3600X, etc., etc., and they make them just big enough. So when you get under a heavy workload, you will hear that fan on that processor, you know, ramp up a bit. And so we may see some people that opt to, um, you know, go with a higher end cooler just so that the you don't hear that fan. Now it's not crazy loud, of course. AMD's not going to put a cooler with their processor that's ridiculously loud. But you do hear it when you're doing a heavy workload. You'll hear it a little bit. So um, that's pretty easy to get to. You know, maybe every six months or so, want to clean that out. That's where all the, the cold air goes in. You see this red perimeter here? You'll actually see that when I turn this to the side and see how that works with the aesthetic of the case. So we'll come back and do that momentarily. All right, I put the front back on, and yeah, I know you can't see me, um, but I want to show you the top, so I kind of got to stand up to do that. And in looking at the top here, let's tilt this forward a bit, you see we have a power, two USB 3.0s, a microphone, headphone jack, and a reset switch. You'll see that red uh, band that kind of goes around here. That's that red piece that we could see you know, when I pulled the front cover off. And so there it is from the top view. Here we have a large opening that has this mesh that's held on with a magnet to keep dust out. You could actually, you know, put two fans up here. And it's possible, depending on how you outfit this thing, that we may do that. Um, we put enough cooling in the system. Um, you don't want to over ventilate the system because you wind up with excessive dust buildup. So we put the appropriate amount of cooling in, whether that's two fans, four fans, six fans, one fan. You know, it just depends on how you option your system out from a graphics card perspective and pro processor perspective. Now setting this back down and looking at the side, we have a smoked glass side. Uh, I know we're getting a little bit of glare there. There we go, that'll help a little bit. Um, so you can sort of pick up highlights inside the case. There's not a lot of lighting in here. Uh, most of our customers aren't big into what they call RGB, you know, all the lighting. 
Um, but it just gives you a hint of what's inside. This is tempered glass here on the side. And, you know, if you look closely, you can see some of the details of, of what's inside. Um, now, this system comes with 16 gigs, which is plenty, but you can option it up to uh, 32. Technically, the board will support up to 128. Um, we can do the RT, uh, RTX line, the 2060, 2070, 2080, 2080 Ti. It's got a 700-watt power supply, a terabyte SSD, which we think that's very important to have a nice large SSD. A lot of companies want to give you a puny SSD and a mechanical hard drive or just a puny SSD, period. Um, we feel like everything should run off the SSD. SSDs are so great that um, we don't really want anything running on a mechanical drive, if at all possible. Wireless AC is in here. You might be able to see the card down there in the bottom. Um, what else have we got? I think that covers it. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll have a number of options there on the website and some descriptions and so forth. Now, you'll see this little red highlight I talked about earlier extend down the side. And between this red highlight and the black, there's a, a little gap. And that's where the air goes in to go in the front. Because you might have been wondering, that whole front, you know, looked solid. Uh, but there's a gap going all the way around that the air goes in the front and goes through that filter. And um, there's plenty of room there for the air to get through. Uh, down here in the bottom, too, we have a separate chamber for the power supply, which is kind of nice to keep that air from mixing with the rest of the case. That air goes straight up through the bottom and, um, and goes straight out the back and doesn't mix. And then we also have a filter for the power supply, and that's always nice to have. It's a plastic. I'm not going to try to put it back right now. It's a plastic mesh, and again, just like the one in the front, you can brush it off is probably the easiest thing to do, but you could run it under some water and then let it dry and then put it back. So that's an overview of our AMD third gen Ryzen. We're real happy that AMD is now back in the game. And so if you're wanting to support the red team, uh, then feel free to come and see us. I even have my red shirt on today.